we have a wonderful guest today. Uh, to introduce him, uh, uh, to tell you something about his past. Joined Kendri Vidyalaya Sangatan as a teacher for SUPW and continued for about two decades and then upgraded himself as a MCA, Masters of Computer Applications and was recruited as Postgraduate Teacher of Computer Science in Kendri Vidalaya Sangatan in the first batch in the year 2007. He is also a, a NCC officer. And there are lots of achievements that goes with this wonderful person. We have with us in the studios of AFTA in the next episode of Pixel Narratives with Anutosh, Mr. Asok Shen Gupta from Bangalore. Hi. Hello. Ashok, uh, I am actually uh, having, you know, no words to describe you as a person. I have been, uh, I know you since uh, 2007 when we are doing a program on Oracle uh, Education Foundation thing.com and that's the first time that we are, I have come to know about you and whatever I have learnt of computer science knowledge is because of your guidance and we met for the first time in 2007 in New Delhi uh, during a program of uh, Oracle Education Foundation thing.com and then we continued this journey for the last about 20 years has been going on and you have encouraged me, you have given me an insight to look at the lovely world of the butterflies. And uh, this has been going on for a long time. And you, this is your visit to Assam, probably for the third time. And I am very happy to have you on my podcast, Pixel Narratives with Anutosh. What made you undergo into so different, different roles in your lifetime. You are a teacher of computer science at present. But then before that, you have been a teacher of socially useful, productive work, that is ASUPW, in Kendri Vidyalaya Sangatan, and you have excelled yourself in other fields other than just your subject. How did you manage all this? Uh, thank you, Anutosh, first of all, for inviting me here in your podcast, uh, actually, as a child, I was curious about many things, a lot of things around me, whatever, 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 whatever was happening around me, I was curious about that. And uh, of course, uh, I had uh, spent a lot of my time uh, in North Bengal, Siliguri, because of my father's posting there. And probably that uh, love for nature came to me from uh, that by from that environment which I uh, lived in. Now, uh, along with uh, this nature, I had a passion for painting because my grandfather was uh, a professional artist and I used to do a lot of uh, sports activities. You know, things, you know, as I grew up, you know, they were not very permanent with me. Everything was with me, but uh, not uh, to a great extent, it did not extend itself with me. So what happened, uh, when I came to Bangalore, uh, you know, I was alone and uh, my family was not with me. So I had to engage myself with certain activity. So Bangalore being a garden city, uh, there, there are a lot of um, green cover in my school. And I used to sit in a, uh, in, a, in a room and in front of my room there was a garden. So I used to observe the butterflies coming and sitting on the flowers there and I was I used to get a little fascinated. It was I am talking about 2007. But I never knew what are, what are the names of the butterflies. Uh, but curiosity started, started growing inside me and I started to search uh, no, online whatever I was available. There were no social media platforms like Facebook those days. And uh, then I found out about uh, a group called Yahoo group 
Butterfly India. So I re uh, requested a join uh, there, and I was uh, uh, actually I was made a member of that group. And I started asking questions, silly questions, of course. Uh, I had no idea about butterflies, and uh, those little bit of information from uh, uh, maybe youngsters and uh, elderly people and experts, including uh, Krishna Mek, uh, Dr. Krishna Mek Kunte and uh, Isaac Kemker, and there was uh, uh, Mansun Jyoti Gogoi and Dr. You know, Vijay Varbe. So I started learning from them. Yeah, then, I, I, I was just going through your um, CV. Yeah. And I could see that you were the member of the Indian Foundation for Butterflies and the founder member of the Bangalore Butterfly Club. And apart from that, you have a lot of publications where you have either been an associate publication, uh, you know, in the publication for butterflies. And I wonder how you manage your time in spite of the extensive work that we have to do in the uh, Sanitan itself. And uh, you know, my question that uh, in my previous episode also I was asking one of those wonderful guests who was with me. Uh, um, uh, so, why were you fascinated with this butterflies? Actually, fascination came because of uh, the vibrant colors of butterflies. Mm -hmm. Nothing more than that initially. Mm -hmm. So, uh, when I saw a butterfly sitting on the wall, I had the curiosity to take a photograph of that. Of that. I had no camera or mobile phone or nothing of that sort which can take a photograph. Mm -hmm. So I purchased one camera and you know, started uh, taking photographs. And uh, just uh, you know, while doing so, while that journey, I purchased a few books also. Uh, then there was, you know, that uh, that thing quest. Uh, yes, yes. Thing I, was, I was, I was, uh, just about they, to come they, to that. They, they uh, organized one uh, international. Uh, yes, yes. You know, uh, those who are watching my show at this moment, I would like to share with this. Ashok had uh, initiated a project on Pin.com and at that time it was ThinkQuest, uh, which was a, a program of Oracle Education Foundation in the United States of America. And the program was, uh, he designed a website with uh, collaboration of students from my school in Guwahati and his school in uh, Bangalore and a school also in uh, Ambala and there were two, three teachers. I was just part of it because uh, uh, as a as an associate coach and Ashok had been doing this, uh, you know, this wonderful website and it was the international winner and uh, it was flying jewels. So yeah. that that's uh, something really. Yeah, it's yeah. a very nostalgic thing to remember. And uh, being in Bangalore, the students in Guwahati, they were also photographing butterflies. They went for the international award function and it's wonderful uh, beginning. So that, that was the beginning actually, uh, that uh, lot of interest uh, I developed in uh, butterflies and my journey was from there, the, the, the graph was uh, progressing very high, very uh, rapidly. Mm -hmm. And uh, I learned a lot of things and I'm still learning and I made very good friends and then came the social media era. Mm -hmm. Then the social media era came and the Facebook came into existence. We had a Butterflies of India group and uh, we became members of the group. And now you'll be surprised to know that that Butterflies of India group has more than 45,000 members oh. across the country and uh, there are some international uh, experts also in that group. So we collaborate and we share a lot of things. and. While doing that uh, social media activity, then came Dr. Krishna Mekunte, who, who initiated and uh, no, that Indian Foundation of Butterfly concept. And it is basically a uh, citizen science platform wherein uh, people from any part of the country can contribute their photograph wow. their records. And there are experts who could identify those yeah. things. So I became a member of that and my friend Rohit is uh, uh, not only a member of that uh, 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 that iPhone butterflies, but now iPhone butterflies is a trust, and he's a trustee, one of the trustees of uh, iPhone butterflies. Yeah. And uh, uh, that platform is doing uh, wonderful job. Uh, we have uh, maybe one more than uh, two lakh records in that mm -hmm. as of now, mm -hmm. and uh, still people are contributing into that. And we will uh, try to make it the biggest platform globally uh, for butterflies. And yeah. and we along with that uh, we. Uh, did a lot of other things like butterfly monitoring stream, 
and uh, back being a member of butterfly club of bangalore we uh, try to engage uh, students and kids and you know various uh, age group people into our uh, club and uh, we try to motivate them to take up uh, nature studies and specifically butterflies and, yeah and uh, i i myself is also benefited with uh, you know interacting with ashok and uh, you know uh, the people in that group and uh, my students in my uh, school they have also joined not only for butterflies but also for moth and uh, something it was really uh, unique during the covid times we were doing this program now my question is that uh, yesterday i was talking to rohit and uh, he came up with this uh, question you are all doing photography of butterflies dragonflies insects the lesser known um you know uh, wildlife thing and you seem to be called as a wildlife photographer but then what happens is mostly when we talk about wildlife photographer we see in a larger uh, dimension we talk about tigers lions and elephants and panther but then what actually uh, you know people like you who are uh, You, you know documenting and recording the activities of different butterflies their movement their their uh, territory their location and things like that how do you think that this can be passed on to the school level okay because uh, what i see uh, as i have been traveling with you for the last 7 uh, uh, days uh, both of you have uh, you know, we are all having wonderful cameras the latest camera with the latest uh, you know macro lens or the telephoto lens or the zoom lens but in the school level how can we initiate uh, you know photography uh, enthusiasts okay. to take up okay. this you passion know, on uh, yeah. first of all let me uh, let me uh, tell you one thing uh, see uh, wildlife enthusiast or nature enthusiast can uh, do whatever he wishes uh, to do uh, whatever is or her interest is but why i uh, really focusing i focus on butterflies there's a reason behind that you know when you go and see a wildlife you know especially a tiger in the forest or you see a, a bird sitting on the canopy you no know, that is a very very large vision you you see only that bird or that tiger which which is roaming around uh, in the jungle but uh, that's a distant view but when you talk about butterflies butterfly gives you a very close uh, view of nature very close and uh, that close view of nature uh, you know makes you to understand the nature in a very uh, you know in a very broad way mm-hmm. you know you have a butterfly sitting on a flower uh, taking the nectar mm-hmm. uh, you know the flower is a particular type because this flower is interacting with the butterfly because it is passing the pollen grains to the butterfly so that other flowers can be pollinated and uh, there may be uh, ant which is trying to uh, protect uh, or now no no or eat that butterfly or other attack the butterfly there may be a uh, um, there may be a stick uh, that is one uh, praying mantis which can uh, attack the butterfly there may be birds which are trying to attack the butterflies you know butterflies are in themselves having lot of camouflage lot of mimic uh, mimicry uh, mm-hmm. aspects uh, so they uh, protect themselves from the in that environment so this type of learning that which plant the butterfly sits on which plant the butterfly lays eggs on and how the eggs look like this is very macro very small very minute observations so what that makes uh, a child or a person who wants to learn about nature to go very close to nature okay this thing and uh, you know butterfly is being the most attractive insect in the world nobody can doubt that it's very easily it comes to a uh, uh, for some child you know as a child if you remember i remember or everybody remembers that we go and try to catch a butterfly mm. and we see that some uh, powdery matter which comes to us mm. like, that was our childhood now i tell my student that please don't do that it is going to hurt the butterfly so uh, these uh, things you uh, know if you can transfer to a child a child will uh, learn the nature in a very you uh, know very close proximity and you will understand the nature in a better way rather than going and observing a tiger Uh, or a, a bird which is sitting in the canopy or maybe flying he or she may not understand nature very in a very uh, broad uh, 
uh, broad way. Okay. So that's why butterflies, or rather any any small macro photography, is more uh, beneficial uh, to understand the nature. Okay. And uh, uh, what would be your suggestions for the basic equipments that are okay. Uh, for uh, butterflies, we uh, for my you know, you know I have been taking butterfly photographs with mobiles. Okay. As long as it gives you a clear image to identify that particular butterfly, it's okay. But before you start taking butterfly photographs, you must understand and learn the behavior of a butterfly. Mm -hmm. When the butterfly sits, at what time of a day it sits, how far you can, uh, how near you can go to a butterfly. All these things comes with experience and when you go with some expert in the field, then you learn very fast. So your learning becomes faster, you understand the behavior of a butterfly. So well, after uh, learning the behavior, your photography will become easy. So you don't require a uh, big equipment uh, camera for that. Of course, uh, no, uh, better equipment gives you better results. No, that's right. okay. That's, mm -hmm. that's a photography. Mm -hmm. That is not basically documentation. For documentation, you don't require uh, expensive gadget. Uh, that is uh, something which you should not go for having a, as a child. You ask uh, a mobile phone or if you go beyond mobile phone, you can ask for a small point and shoot camera. That's also okay. And to start with, it's okay. Later on, if you uh, get money, if you want to uh, be a professional photographer, then, then again, it is a difference between a, a, a person who is a citizen scientist and a photographer. Photographers generally, generally, uh, generally, as well, they are not citizen scientists. Okay. So for me, uh, I consider myself to be a citizen scientist. I'm not a photographer. Mm -hmm. I'm a very bad photographer. But my photographs are good enough uh, for that particular insect to be identified. And that is what I want okay. for documentation purpose. Okay. Uh, the, you know, there are a lot of things uh, that, that come with this. Like, yeah, a good photograph, not necessarily it's because of a good camera. It is how you perceive a thing, how you uh, have some kind of a content in your photograph image. That makes it a... It's a great photograph and all good photographs have been taken with, with the most ordinary kind of cameras that ever had been made. Now, my, uh, I always wanted to ask one thing that when we talk about wildlife photographers, we talk about people who photographs, uh, you know, action uh, and nowadays uh, photographing wildlife has also become uh, dramatized and, uh, you know, you have photographers who create that scene, recreate it and then they take a photograph and that's why we can see a lot of elements which is very dramatic and then they have a very rich market value of that photograph. Mm. But do we have that kind of a market value for butterflies? The uh, photograph of any sort is, uh, if it is uh, having a quality, uh, it can be sold online. Any photograph, of, and especially uh, of Indian flora and fauna. So there is, uh, there are uh, online platforms where you can sell your photographs. That's the part. But that uh, it is not that you take today a photograph and tomorrow you can sell it. You have to build your repo in online platform. It, it comes with time. I'm not a person who knows all the intricacies of mm -hmm. how to sell a photograph. I've never sold my photograph till date. So actually, in fact, uh, on the contrary. We uh, share our photographs free of cost to a person who is writing, authoring a book. Uh, that is, that is your uh, yeah. sharing. Your co you are actually uh, collaborating with a person, sharing your photographs mm. for the knowledge. Yeah, that, that can be spread amazing. to the See, people. Till date, because we have not earned a single uh -huh. penny by doing photography. Because you have lot of uh, publications where you will find how to photograph a tiger in the jungle, how to photograph a wild horse in a jungle how to photograph a panther, where to look for a panther, where to go. But you do not have so much, you know, publications. Uh, even for birds, we ha you can have a, a Dr. Salim Ali book, a handbook with you. You can under identify the birds. But for butterflies, I find it is very, very restricted kind of a thing. Uh, we still do not have that kind of a popularity. You know, spreading uh, other than the publications that we see in sanctuary magazines and other th things. But we have, think, don't you think that we really need to uh, promote? Uh, okay. Uh, there, are quite quite a few, level. there are quite a few butterfly books available in the market mm. and they are well written. Uh, that uh, starts from uh, uh, I 
as a chemist book of butterflies of india butterflies of western ghat by dr milin bakre and uh, hemant ogale and uh, butterflies of pakke butterflies of garovins and there are butterflies of boxer tiger reserve butterflies of uttarakhand there are so many books available in the market mm. and you can just uh, go online and browse for those books you will get them and they are not that costly also uh, starting uh, to have a book is always good but more than book you require a somebody to guide you so for that you need to uh, you know look for those uh, person having let expertise in uh, in documenting butterflies and i tell you how to photograph a butterfly that's something which is very in, in interesting yes, also yes, yes. see when you uh, take a see a butterfly so a butterfly can be identified uh, by its uh, morphological traits by the patterns in the wings and the spots here and there you can identify a butterfly but if you a butterfly is sitting here this way and you are taking a photograph from this side those traits are not visible so what you have to do you have to go perpendicular to the butterfly and take a photograph of that butterfly that is the art of taking there are two uh, types of photographs you take one photograph which is a close wing photograph and from the side and one photograph when the butterfly opens the wing and you take from top these two angles to are to be remember that when one you want to take a butterfly photograph it should be a good photograph you have to be perpendicular to the wing okay. that's thing you you explain this using the camera see i am having a camera with me and this is the butterfly suppose see if i try to take a photo this way you will i will not be able to uh, know what uh, basically uh, this butterfly is all about so what i do i try to go and uh, try to take photo like this way okay this is one and when it is on the ground i try to go on the top of the butterfly and take the photo i don't want to take a photo of a sitting butterfly on the ground this way so because if it is sitting this way then i can take but if it is sitting this way i have to go top the angle uh, is very important for a butterfly photograph okay so whenever uh, we want to take a good photograph of a butterfly we should be careful about the angle of the photograph okay I like uh, I, I was just uh, hearing your conversation with Rohit during the tour that we have uh, been to Bhutan and uh, Manas and other places. Uh, opening shot and closing shot. No, what is the meaning of that? See, the butterfly has uh, two pairs of wings. Okay, and when they are setting, generally, all most of the butterflies, their wings are closed this way. So this is called a closed wing. And sometimes or often a butterfly wants to bask. and it opens the wing so it is sitting this way this is called open wing and this is called a closed wing okay and uh, i have come across lot of terms that you have been using uh, wonderful words and i could you tell some about those okay there are a lot of terms we use with butterflies first of all uh, we talk about uh, uh, the a perch butterfly is perching is a good perch mm. so perch is something which is makes a butterfly photograph beautiful so the perch means how a butterfly is sitting a good perch gives you a, a wonderful bouquet so that uh, you take a butterfly and the bouquet comes that's the best uh, way of taking a butterfly photograph apart from that we talk about various terms like uh, i have got a life for today i got a life for indeed uh, at the, the, the garbanga today and that is the, the butterfly which is called the uh, northern jungle queen and uh, it's a pristine butterfly of this area and i got it so we are very happy so for us you see when you start the going into butterfly photography and or documenting butterflies you start counting how many species you have photographed okay it goes on from 1 2 3 4 100 200 200 so beyond 200 so every increasing beyond 200 to 300 maybe it is very difficult to go beyond that you have to visit various places in the country to increase your count so they in the if you talk about the whole country there are about 200 species of butterflies which are uh, commonly found everywhere almost everywhere but beyond that you will get specialized and area specific butterflies mm -hmm. and for that you have to go there you may be lucky enough to get it or you may not be that lucky so you have to go keep on going so it is thought that uh, you know it's a, it's a cost uh, oriented activity you have to invest money in uh, for uh, going and uh, taking butterfly photographs people are there uh, out of the 1500 species they have seen more almost 800 species of butterflies the people uh, who have started today and within 2 years they go to 
बट बियॉन्ड टू हंड्रेड एवरी ईयर देखे टू थ्री फोर फाइव मे बी टेन नॉट बियॉन्ड दैट सो इन दिस ट्रिप वन आई केम टू असम आई गॉट ऑनली फाइव स्पीशीज विच वर न्यू टू मी ओके सो रेस्ट आर ऑल नॉट टू आई रियली लव टू हियर अबाउट यू नो दाइफ साइकिल ऑफ अ बटरफ्लाई ओके because that is uh, what interest because it what i is uh, have come to know is that butterfly have a very short time mm -hmm. short time in a normal uh, condition and even shorter when it has been under threat mm -hmm. so uh, could you just tell me uh, okay. our viewers what uh, exactly is the cycle of a butterfly, See, uh, butterfly uh, you know it's an insect okay uh, this butterfly uh, it has a life cycle which is very fascinating and we uh, uh, call a term it, it as metamorphosis some sometimes now what happens a butterfly lays eggs on specific plants mm -hmm. specific place is very very selective and it will not go and lay eggs anywhere so every butterfly has a specific plant called larval host plant that but butterfly plant where butterfly lays eggs is called larval host plant it goes and lays eggs there it may be there may be a single egg there may be multiple eggs okay the egg hatches and we get a larvae egg larvae and this larvae grows by eating voraciously every day every minute it keeps on eating till it grows up to 400 times of its initial size 400 times and during that period it changes its skin That it has to shed its skin, uh, skin and get a new skin. Otherwise, if he, that small in, in that larva, if it start growing, it will rupture its skin and it will die. But that nature has given that particular uh, mechanism to it. It changes its skin. That is called molting. So the butterfly molts four to five times and it becomes a pupa. In the pupa, in the pupa, what happens? That butterfly, which was looking like a small creature, it melts. it melts into a liquid and that liquid it again rearranges itself the molecular rearrangement happens and it starts to develop into a butterfly uh, what is the time period the time Average. depends on the species see when a butterfly lays eggs to 4 to 5 days the egg will hatch most of most of the butterflies 5 days the egg will hatch after that it will take 15 to 30 days depending upon the species to become a pupa from caterpillar to pupa and after the pupa it will take 8 to 10 days to become a butterfly and depending upon the butterfly the butterfly adult which is called an imago imago it will live for one month to six months depending upon the species okay so uh, uh, climate also uh, plays a big role very important role climate plays because every butterfly species has a specific climatic uh, actually uh, that is called uh, um, a requirement mm -hmm. so a uh, butterfly uh, which may be a dry area species it loves to breed in summer there are butterflies which uh, loves to uh, start breeding pre monsoon and they will be in the wings in the uh, during the monsoon the butterflies which Uh, starts to breed in post monsoon, and some of the butterflies they love to be in the plains. Some of the butterflies they love to in the hills. Some of the butterflies they love to be in the Himalayas, over five thousand meters. That height altitude, can you imagine a butterfly staying at three to five thousand meters at that cold and survives and breeds there? So, uh, like all other animals, mm. uh, do they also migrate? Yes, butterflies. Uh, most of the butterflies are migratory in nature. so they have various types of migrations there is a, a migration is basically uh, is requirement of food and uh, habitat where they can breed okay so there is called something called altitudinal migrations butterflies are mainly altitude migration they come to lower heights they go back to the higher height okay that is a common phenomenon and there are long distance migrations also yeah and long distance migration migration happens for various species of butterflies and we are studying on uh, migration in western ghats where this uh, species are called denines they are milkweed butterflies in the, during the monsoon they start migrating from western ghats to eastern ghats uh, this distance is about 500 i have been uh, you know engaging students into nature related activities in my school in fact i have a butterfly club in the school and uh, uh, i have uh, 
our students to document nature seriously. So my suggestion is every school should have a very dedicated nature club, and they should involve themselves in the biodiversity documentation of the school for a long term. And for that, they can uh, take the help of the science teachers, and the science teachers can you know um, create a project in uh, app called iNaturalist. And yes. that's the phase where yes. I think we, we have, have also have, we have done, done that. We have so done in that. iNaturalist, you need not be knowing the identification of the butterfly, mm -hmm. or, or any insect, or any creature, any bird you see. Mm -hmm. You just take a photograph, which can be identified, and then you upload that into iNaturalist by creating a project. So this project will slowly build up, and you have uh, the documentation for your school over a period of maybe two to three to four years, and that can be used and to create projects for your. Uh, National Science Congress mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. such a project which I we did in our school has won the accolades being adjudged the best project in the country for NCSE 2023. Oh wow! So that was a wonderful narrative that we have just come across with Mr. Ashok Sen Gupta, and uh, this program cannot be just uh, winded up because there are still there are so much to be. Uh, you know, learn from this uh, wonderful person with his experience and uh, the wonderful images that he has been taking all through these years, collaborating with students and teachers across the country and beyond. So uh, I am sure the viewers must have wonder uh, had a wonderful experience, uh, you know, hearing uh, Mr. Ashok Sen Gupta, and it is a pleasure uh, that we had him in my video podcast. Pixel narratives with Anutosh. With another guest, next time, once again, we'll be again meeting with a new episode of Pixel Narratives with Anutosh. Thank you.